Sevilla. and welcome everyone. Welcome to this Church of St. George on this historic occasion in celebration of the coronation of His Majesty King Charles III and his Queen Consort, Camilla. Before we begin, allow me to express my appreciation to the combined choristers that we will have today from Grace United Church in Thornbury, from St. George's Anglican Church in Owen Sound, from Christ Church in Meaford, and our resident choristers here in the parish of the Blue Mountains. This is the second time that we've come together to sing in this way, and when you see us come in, uh, there's hardly any room to fit everyone up <laughs> to the chancel. It's nice and cozy up there. Uh, but this is the, uh, our attempt three times a year to bring together the three choirs uh, to be able to share in music that any choir by itself would struggle to do alone. But when we put together all three of them with friends from Grace United Church, the sound is very mighty, as you will hear. Uh, I also give thanks for the musical leadership of the Beaver Valley Pipes and Drums. They are a historic and musical jewel here in the Blue Mountains, and it is always fun to celebrate with them. Lastly, I give thanks for the leadership of our Mayor, Her Worship, Andrea Matrasoff, and for our counselors and staff here in the Blue Mountains, Mayor Matrasoff will close our service today with a toast to the King. Thank you all for joining us with the service. God save the King. I invite you to please join with me in standing. Follow along with the service today can be found with the words on the screen. The King of Kings came not to be, to be served, but to serve, and to bring forth the kingdom of God here on earth. O come, let us worship the Lord.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with you all. And with thy spirit. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to offer worship and praise to Almighty God and to celebrate the life of our nations, to pray for Charles, our King, to recognize and give thanks for his life of service to Canada, to the realms, and to the Commonwealth, and mark his consecration for the service of his people. May we come together in body, mind, and spirit in a joyful hope and in commitment to serve one another in love. Amen. Amen. I invite the congregation to please be seated for our opening prayer. Thanks for our choristers. Let us offer this prayer for them today. O Lord our God, before whom the heavens do bow, who does give ear to the praises of thy church on earth, look, we beseech thee upon those who sing in this choir. Give them reverence and worship, 
sincerity and purpose, and purity of life, that what they sing with their lips may be what they believe in their hearts and show forth in their lives. To the honor and glory of thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 I invite you to join with me in standing as together we share our first congregational hymn, All Creatures of Our God. Thank you.
we come before the grace of Almighty God, let us first ask for cleansed hearts and cleansed minds. Are there kneeling or seeking? Let us pray. Whereby I pray and beseech you, as many are here, here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and a humble voice unto the throne of heavenly grace. And together we pray. Almighty and most merciful Lord, we have erred and strayed from my ways and have lost you. We have followed too much to place our sins are at the moment. We have done those things that you have not done. We have done them. Restore thou them their penitence, according to thy promises to prayer and to mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, may we have found the godly, righteous, and so great, does the Lord our God Amen. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the harm of any person, but rather that all may turn from sin to new life, hath given power and commandment to his declare to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfailingly believe his holy gospel, whereby we beseech him to grant us true repentance in his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
the first lesson. The first lesson in, is written by in the epistles to the Colossians, the first chapter, beginning at the ninth verse. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to Him, as you bear fruit in every good work and that you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be strong, may you be made strong, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transformed us into the kingdom of the beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him, all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Here endeth the first lesson. I would invite you to join with me responsibly for the Magnificat by the half verse, following along on the screen. My soul doth magnify the Lord. And my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regard the lowliness of his enemies. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me. And holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him. Throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud. He hath put down the mighty from their seat. And hath exalted the humble and weak. He hath filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he hath sent him empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel. As he promised to our fathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. And to the Holy Ghost. As as in the beginning, he is now, and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. The second lesson is taken from the 47th Psalm. Alleluia, alleluia, O oh, clap your hands together, all you people. O oh, sing unto God with the voice of a melody, for the Lord is high and to be feared. He is the great King upon all the earth. O oh, sing praises, sing praises unto our God. O oh, sing praises, sing praises unto our King. For God is the King of all the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. Here ended the second lesson. Our gospel hymn is entitled, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. If you're following along in the blue hymnals, it's hymn number 381, and the words will be on the screen. Please join with me.
Lord be with you. And with the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the opposed go free, oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing, the gospel of Christ. I invite the congregation to please be seated. And this time I call upon the members of the Beaver Valley Pipes and Drums.
on this day in which we remember King Charles, King Charles coronated today early this morning. We, our prayers rise up to heaven from our heart for our King. We also unite into our heart and, and gather and collect into our hearts and our minds our faith. Faith that has kept us alive, that keeps our church alive, that remembers Jesus in the center of us. And so we affirm our faith in this moment. We will be calling God's presence here in our hearts. Let's say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. Father Almighty, may your right hand and earth, and may Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Lord's power, was crucified and was buried. He descended to heaven. Third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven. may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Light in our darkness we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thine only Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, Oh 
at this time we have a, a special presentation uh, by, um, by which I need to call on the two wardens of this church. Uh, that would be Donna Whiteside as the rector's warden and Michelle Hughes as the people's warden. Today, St. George's Church is being given a gift uh, that has so much symbolism within the tradition of the Anglican Church and uh, ties together the relationship between the Church and the Crown. Within Anglican Churches, wardens serve two different groups of people. There's a warden that is always appointed by the rector and supports the rector in serving the spiritual needs of the community, and the rector serves on behalf of a bishop. There's a second warden that is a people's warden, and like we heard in many, if you got up early this morning and watched the coronation, you heard many of the prayers where the king was offering himself in service to the people. The, rep, the people's warden pledges the same thing and serves the needs of the congregation in the wider community. Uh, one thing that we have never had in this church has been one of the funny little things that Anglicans like, and you saw lots of them carried around today, which would be wands. These warden, warden's wands are being presented to us today by uh, the Diocese of Brandon, Manitoba. Our congregation has been partnered with the Diocese of Brandon, uh, Manitoba in offering theological courses over the last five years. And as a gift in thanksgiving for that partnership, they have presented these warden's wands to us today. Now, interesting to add that you notice that in the coronation today, you can have no coronation of king without first having a bishop. And then weirdly enough, you saw the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, bending the knee and holding the king's robe and offering his allegiance to the king. Now, ideally, while all this pomp and ceremony may sound rather ridiculous for us Canadians, it is a sign of showing service before God. And if there's one thing that I love so much that was represented today in all the pageantry, it is a leader who offers to serve others and have, holds himself and herself in Camilla before God's sight. And so these two warden's wands, the rector's warden's wand, and the people's warden's wand are presented to our wardens today. And they will go on, uh, well, it depends on how fancy wand they want to get, either little, little wands or full sticks, and will be polished up and will be placed in service in this community for future generations. Let's give a round of applause to the vendors. And I'm always thankful to Donna and Michelle and to our four other wardens for their service in our community. At this time, we're going to have a little bit of fun. Uh, we are going to share in a toast. And in order to do that, we need something in our hands and soon after that, something in our bellies. So bear with me. Uh, we are going to roll out all the good stuff now. Uh, if you do not have a glass of something in your hand and something that you're holding in your other hand, as we get a little farther on, wave so we can track you down. <laughs> Father Brendan, would you, uh, you may, yeah, I don't know if you want to keep the coat on. We're yeah. really just glorified table servers anyway, so. <laughs> ah, fancy out. Donna and Michelle, <laughs> in service to the community. <laughs> Can I put you to work?
only the finest of ginger ales today, but it is the champagne of ginger ale, so we'll see. Save a little sip of your <laughs> ginger ale for the toast. <laughs> Feel free to. Thank you. This morning, we saw during the coronation 
the symbols of the royal office that were layered onto our king's shoulders and his heart and his hands and his head. I noted five words in listening and watching that ceremony this morning. Service, sincerity, commitment, justice, and equity. So as we celebrate King Charles, his coronation and his acceptance of his royal office and his roles and responsibilities with a fresh perspective and gravity of that office. This is also a moment for us to take reflection of everything that we do to serve others as well. So think of that as we pay our respects to our King Charles, that you and me and everyone here in this room have ways to serve others as well, with our hearts, with our hands, with our heads, and with our voices. Here in our community, here in our country, and here on this earth that we share. Please join me in raising a glass to His Majesty King Charles III for health, happiness, for wisdom and compassion, for peace in his reign, and for his service to others. Let us toast the king. To the king. <laughs> Continuing in the seriousness of the ceremony, I just want to remind Gray there are some crumbs under the uh, chair over there where Clark was sitting. <laughs> <laughs> but later, <laughs> as we uh, come closer to the end of the service, we remind you that God has been with us. God has, God has met us through music, through the words of the three, our three beautiful choirs through our clergy prayers, through your hearts, Christ has met each of us in this place, through our hearts and our prayers for our, our King Charles. And so now we raise our prayers in our hearts and we pray for people, the young, the old, those who are lonely, those who have no help or hope. We pray for all. So let us pray. Be mindful, Lord, of thy people bow before thee. And of those who are absent, sickness or infirmity, care for the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint hearted, collect the scattered, and bring the wandering to thy fold. Travel with the voyagers, defend the widows, shield the orphans, deliver the captives, heal the sick, suffer all tribulation, necessity, or distress. Remember for good all those that love us and those that hate us and those that have desired us unworthy as we are to pray for them. And those whom we have forgotten, do thou, O Lord, remember. For thou art the helper of the help of the sick, thou who knowest each mortal's needs and has heard their prayer. Grant unto each according to thy merciful loving kindness and thy eternal love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us this time with, and with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to stand for the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. This is service draw.
us to its close, let us leave this place with God's blessing. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and henceforth, world without end. Christ our King, make you faithful and strong to do his will, that you may reign with him in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and all whom you serve this day and all your days. Amen. Amen. And before we close with the royal anthem, uh, let's give a round of applause to those who made this possible. Firstly, to Dr. Christopher Burton and to Janet Kringle, our directors of music today. Give thanks for the choristers from Grace United Church, Christ Church Me for St. George's Owen Sound and St. George's The Pines. We are always thankful for the leadership of the Beaver Valley Pipes. And we are thankful for the work of our mayor and all those in council and the staff of the town. Let us raise our voices one final time with the Royal Anthem. Mm -hmm.